Ready to go. Mm -hmm. okay. Welcome to Industry Insiders by Go8 podcast series. Hear stories from industry experts, travelers, explorers, and globetrotters who will inspire you to dream bigger, explore further, and discover a world waiting to be discovered. Today, I'd like to welcome Aresh Dimitru, our own in house vampire. He doesn't mind me saying this because Aresh is actually originally from uh, Transylvania. Um, and he has recently just returned from a fam trip to New Zealand, which is what we're going to talk about today. So before we get into that, I just want to give us a very quick history of who you are and when, how long you've been at Goway, all that type of stuff, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Uh, I've been with Goway uh, for just under two years now. In November, it's going to be two years since I've joined Goway, and I'm really enjoying my time with Goway. Two years. It's I remember we first met. I know, I know. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, you were supposed to you were supposed to train me, and we ended up talking history for yeah, a couple of hours. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've been with Goway for just under two years, um, National Accounts Manager for Canada for Goway, and really, really enjoying what I do. And I, like you said, I just came back from New Zealand, which was, which was awesome, which was yeah. really, really cool. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, it was a fam trip. Um, who else was with you on the trip? So I, uh, we had eight travel advisors from Canada, basically, um, and they were from you know Ontario all the way to based out of Ontario all the way to to um, you know Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. So a really nice mix. Uh, and then we also had a representative from Air New Zealand because Air New Zealand helped us out with the flights. Okay, then um, did any of these agents or do they? Had they any experience with selling New Zealand before? Were they fresh to New Zealand, so to speak, or from, okay, one from selling it, and yeah. two from traveling there? Was it new <laughs> to them all, or something? Yeah. I had one advisor who had been to New Zealand before, and that was over 20 years ago, so obviously that really doesn't count because yeah. a lot of changes had happened in the meantime. Um, the way the agents were selected was based on their sales of Goway and mm -hmm. especially their sales of uh, South Pacific destinations with Goway. Um, and then the other thing that they had to do was to become a New Zealand specialist before joining the fam trip. So that was one of the things that they had to do. Right. So that New Zealand specialist program was the uh, New Zealand Tourism Board. That is correct. Specialist yes, program. Yes, yes, yes. Not the Go Away Pro not Travel the, Academy. Not the Go Away Pro Travel Academy. Now, having said that, yes. I did tell them that there is one, obviously. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm confident that they're going to do that one as well. Okay. So I think just for agents out there, we're working towards that um, if you want to join us on a FAM, again, as, um, as Arash just pointed out, it's obviously to do with sales to a destination question. But I think we'll also be mandating that you have to become a Goway Pro yeah, Travel Specialist yeah, can, as well I as can, any yeah. country specialist. So. <laughs> I can completely agree with that one. Right. So you did say it was uh, uh, supported by Air New Zealand. So that is I correct. assume you flew Air New Zealand yes. down yes. To, to New Zealand. So where did yeah. you fly from? With, with Air New, I, I assume you went with something like Air Canada across to Vancouver or wherever. Yeah. 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 So and then from there? Was that it, is correct. Was yes. the so Gateway Vancouver? Yeah, everybody met in Vancouver, basically. And so that's that for Canadians. That is correct. Yeah. So where does Air New Zealand fly out of the US? I believe it's. Uh, I believe they fly out of LA. LA, yeah. Yeah, I believe they fly out of LA. So at the end of the day, you know what? For Canadians, five hours to Vancouver or five hours to LA would be the same thing. Doesn't matter. Same you thing. Know, yeah. Doesn't really matter. The only thing is obviously you're kind of avoiding the US customs and all of that stuff if you're going to travel from uh, from Toronto to Vancouver. Um, I gotta tell you, the flight was you know 14 hours from Vancouver to Auckland. Okay. It passed really quickly, uh, and I think that Air New Zealand. Were you at the were you at the front of the plane or the back of the plane well, or the middle in, of the I plane? I was in the middle of the, the plane. Of the we plane. were all oh, okay. in the middle of the plane. We were that all in the middle of the plane. Makes it a bit more comfortable. Yeah, it does make it a bit more comfortable. And I'll tell you what, though, I think that um, you know. Uh, and we don't want to talk too much about their New Zealand because they got to talk about their product. Yeah, of course. Anyway, uh, but I think that it is a great option for for travelers to get on Air New Zealand. They do have the you know the sky couches at the back of the plane, basically, so you can turn those three seats or four seats into a into a oh, okay. you know no, bed. So okay. there's all sorts of perks that they offer for uh, you know for long haul clients. So I think that to me is a, is a great option. And I'm always trying to put myself. You know, in the traveler's shoes, when when I travel on a fam trip or when I travel to, you know, for business, mm -hmm. and think, would I do this with my family? Yeah, would yeah, I do yeah. this with my kids? Would I do this with my wife? And I think that's one of the things that I said. Yes, you know what? Yeah, it can be done. It didn't feel like fourteen hours. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I was I was just down in Australia before this was on a personal trip. I didn't get middle or front of the the bus, so to speak. But 
Yeah, it's a, it is a long haul, no argument. But um, what I've said in all my training stuff, and you could probably support this as well, regardless of where you're sitting. It's, you know, literally, you know, it's a couple of glasses of wine, a movie. That is Then correct. you sleep. Yes. And then for yeah. all intents and purposes, you're almost there. Um, and again, in the back of the bus, I came back with, um, who did I come back with? Oh, I came back with, went down with United, came back with Air Canada. Mm. And it's a long way to be in a tight com confines, but it was still, it's, it's not as bad as people no, make it out no, to be. No, 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 you're not, you're not standing. Getting anxious about exactly, it. Exactly, yeah, 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 you're not, you're not, you're not going to stand for 14 hours, you know, you still get a meal, you still get. You get a meal, you, you, you know, get to sleep, yeah. Exactly, so. yeah, so no, the, the, the road there was great. And one of the things that I really think everybody should do once we get there, once you get there, is the fact that the hotel room was ready for us. Right. And so I think. What time did you land? Okay, landed, so let, uh, yeah. step back. So yeah. what time did you fly out of Vancouver? Because it would be the same yeah. roughly time out of LA. 8.55 p.m. local time out of Vancouver. You obviously right. crossed the international date line. So we flew on the Monday the 5th. And then we arrived in uh, in Auckland on the 7th in the morning. Morning. So 7 I, something, yeah. 7 o'clock. So really going down, it's like nighttime. It, yes. Your, yeah. your body clock is in the exactly. sleep mode, be it west coast exactly. or east coast. Yeah. You get up in the morning. Yes. And I've always found, I, again, I had no real problems when I went down to Australia with the, with the time change and date change. Getting there, it was trouble when I came back, which yeah. I think you're feeling a bit now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm still feeling it, but that's also because I didn't go home directly from when we got back to Vancouver. I actually ended up going to Columbus, Ohio, believe it or not, because my son was playing a baseball tournament, so oh, I went okay. to see him. So I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of like jet lagged, but I'm also super tired because that's just, yeah, I, yeah. you know. A lot of personal stuff. Going exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so you arrived at about, uh, well, early morning, yeah. a day, two days gone because yes. of the date change. And of course, for those who know most will, when you come back, you get, if you don't you go to a baseball game, yes. you get your day back, you actually can sometimes arrive a couple of hours before you left, which is mm -hmm. all pretty weird. Um, and you said your hotel room was waiting for you, which yes. was nice. Yeah, and that's the one thing that I would suggest for all travel advisors, basically talk to your clients. Yes, you will pay for an additional night for the hotel, but that means that your hotel room is ready for when you get there around 9, 9.30 in the morning, because it does give you an opportunity to go, you know, have a shower, you know, you can still probably catch some breakfast that day and then off you go. You're going to be, you know, a lot better off than, than just kind of like, fre yeah, exactly. yeah, landing, refreshed, exactly. Having you know, to worry about your bags, exactly. dragging around, yeah. storing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So right. I think that was, that was one of the things that, that I definitely recommend for everybody. Okay. So I guess the easiest thing to do now is just tell us about your trip to New Zealand because watching your posts on Facebook. Yes. And for those that are out there listening <laughs> to us, we have a dedicated agents only Facebook group uh, where our account managers, when they're traveling, myself, uh, Renee, our um, sales manager, will post images, stories of what's going on, be it business, but particularly when they're on fam trips. Um, so I was watching Goresh and his posts and it looked awesome. You seem to be pretty impressed with New Zealand. Um, and you did do North and South Island. Correct? That is correct, yeah. Okay, so um, I've been to New Zealand, haven't been for quite a few years, but it was for those hops and stops from Australia over. Um, was this your first time? Yes. Okay, so yeah. give us your first time impression <laughs> of New Zealand. I'll tell you what, first of all, uh, I honestly did not know what to expect. Mm -hmm. That was the, that's the first thing. I had no idea what to expect. So um, I was honestly blown away of how cosmopolitan New Zealand is. Uh, that was the first impression that I had. Landing in Auckland, it almost felt like landing in Vancouver in a way. It kind of mm -hmm. has the similar vibe. Um, and then, you know, having having two full days in, in, in Auckland um, does give you a good understanding of what the city is all about. Uh, you know, I do recommend for, for people who have not been, you know, Getting a getting a guide or having some sort of a guided experience in in Auckland because you do understand a lot more. You do get a better appreciation for what the, for what the area, not only the city but the entire area of Auckland is is right. all about. Um, you know, and it's it's worth pointing out as well that the majority of the Maori culture or Maori culture is on the North Island that is as correct. well. Yes. So as um, as Varesh is pointing out, having, and there's something we always advise to go, a private guided services yes. are the way to go. Yes, they are a bit more money, but what you get out of it is so much more in-depth knowledge, yes. inside information, be Correct. it about a museum, local cultures, a restaurant, whatever it may be. Correct. So yeah, I, yeah. yeah, 
I agree that, that no, it was it was amazing because uh, you know we we were basically picked up from the from the hotel by the by the guide, uh, taken around Auckland, basically given a, an orientation tour, so to speak, of of Auckland, um, you know, waterfront, and then all of the surrounding areas, and then in the afternoon after lunch, we we went to um, you know to um, uh, do a bit of a hike. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we went and we saw one of the you know famous black sand beaches in okay. uh, in uh, in and around Auckland. So that was interesting. I remember he grabbed a piece of magnet and he actually showed us how the the sand sticks to the magnet oh, really? because there's a lot of iron content in the uh, yeah in because the, um, in the sand yeah yeah because New Zealand sits on the uh, rim of fire in the Pacific. It's very well volcanic. Um, yeah. To the south of Auckland is Rotorua, which is famous for its hot springs. And we just did a webinar a couple of weeks ago um, with the representative from Central North Island, yes. New Zealand. And I was, again, I know New Zealand somewhat well, but I was blown away that how much there is within Auckland and the sort of surrounds, yes. which I'm sure you yeah. did as well as part of your trip. We did, and that's, and that's a lot, you know. And as, as a highlight for me also was the fact that we got to, uh, you know, sail on an America's Cup boat, which was, oh, really, which was really fun, I think, for everybody. First time, sort of like getting my getting my. Uh, Is that one of the newer yachts or one of the old school yachts? No, so this one. So it's like a big catamaran. This, uh, it wasn't a catamaran; it was a single hull. But this one was apparently this one had raced in 1995. Okay. So this was the actual boat that raced in America's Cup in 1995. Uh, we got up to about 10, 11 knots, I want to say, uh, but from what we've been told. The, the the you know the boats that they use nowadays you know 20 years later almost uh can reach speeds up to like 50 knots it's given yeah, the i was going to say have yeah, you, it's like if you ever if you didn't see one down there if you like, we saw anyone, one we actually we saw team new zealand practicing and the same day when we were oh, yeah? sailing we're like yeah we're not catching those guys they're it's insane okay. those yeah boats. it is like, it is absolutely insane how fast they go because from a historic point of view i was back in australia i think it was in the mid 80s when australia was you know the bees knees of everywhere and australia won the America's Cup, and they were the first country to take it away from America. And it was done with a single hull, but it was yes. done with the wing keel. And that was yeah. revolutionary for the time. From that to what they are now, these high-speed catamarans, which lift out of the water. Oh, we were, just at, we were at 45 degrees at one point, and I was thinking, man, if this thing tips over, <laughs> what do we do? Like, what's the, you know, what's the liability here, you know? Um, but everybody really enjoyed it, and you get you get to try it. You actually, I got to to what, I don't know if you call it steer it, whatever you know, uh, yes. for 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 a bit. So that was actually really really. So interesting. can the average globetrotter going out in New Zealand take yes, that experience? Yes, yes, yep. yes, yes. They have they have daily sailings basically. Obviously, when we went, it was kind of like shoulder to low season. Mm -hmm. So it does it is weather dependent, but it is very very popular in the summer months, and it is something that you do basically. It steps away from the from you know any hotel that we would use in uh, in. in you know, yeah, in the okay. downtown core of Auckland, Wonderful. so it's it's actually really really nice. Okay. Um, then from there we went down towards Rotorua, as you mentioned. You got the you know you got the sulfur springs, the hot springs, and everything. We had a lovely lovely evening there with a um, at Tepatu, which is a Maori experience. Mm -hmm. um, really interesting. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought I looked at the schedule and I was like, man, this is four hours. Jesus, you know, I was jet lagged. I was tired. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. It's it's very once you get into it. <coughs> <laughs> Once you get into it, it's it's actually really really cool, right? Um, because it is interactive. They do, you know. Yes, I saw uh, some video of you doing the haka. I did, I did. <laughs> yes, I don't know if that's. I mean, honestly, I think that you know, you know how haka is supposed to be, you know, uh, intimidating for the for the for the opponent. Well, it's 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 a mixture. I've I've learned over the years. Yeah. Most hakas are a war dance used primarily in sport. Yes. Um, as a challenge. Yes. Right? Come on, I would it. trust me. You looked at my haka. I was not challenging anybody. Yeah, yeah. I was just. I was probably they were going to die of laughter if anything. But I've also learned that the haka is used also as remembrance. So often when people have passed away, a haka is performed. Yes. There are separate hakas for women. And what I did learn in all my research is there is no problem with a non Maori or a non New Zealander because this is a very multi-racial yes. country, as in they yes. truly embrace the Maori culture through all aspects of New Zealand life. Anyone can do the, uh, the haka as long as it's done with respect. Yes. Right, and yes. my understanding, and I think you're a uh, your example of it, they actually welcome yes. foreigners to do the haka. Again, we as did long not. as it's done with exactly. respect. Yeah, yeah, I was honestly like, I'm not gonna do this, right? And they were like, no, we would like everybody to join us and do the haka. So that was, that was actually really, really interesting. Um, you know, 
going back to going back to Auckland for a second because I just remembered. Obviously, mm-hmm. we went to the Old Blacks Museum, which was which was really interesting as well. And that's when you kind of learn how important rugby is for yes. you know for, <laughs> yeah. for New Zealand. Um, the other thing that I've learned is that sailing is actually taught in schools, which is kind of mind blowing because oh, really? it's yeah it's not something that, yeah. that that we do. Yeah, we stopped somewhere for just a quick uh, just a quick uh, stop for like a coffee um, around Auckland, and and there were uh, there were kids like my daughter's age like age nine basically and they were um you know they were having a sailing class and that's well, basically I, part of the curricula which you know well i guess auckland is a harbor city it's yes. actually called the city of sails and new zealand is for all intents and purposes two big islands so exactly lots yeah. of water so being confident on the water i guess is correct, a thing. correct. Yeah. it's probably much like they teach kids how to skate in canada exactly yeah uh, so that was definitely interesting. Weta Workshop was great as well because I thought, and this is again, I'm backtracking to, to right, Auckland. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cool because, you know, even if you're not a, a movie aficionado and if, even if you're not necessarily into the whole idea of, of you know, Lord of the Rings and, and the, the Hobbit, Hobbit yeah, and yeah. everything, between Weta Workshop and then going to Hobbiton, I think it was really, really nice to see all of those places, to see how much work it takes yeah. and the amount of, of passion that these people have for you know anything that has to do with you know and it's, there's no cgi there's no special effects there's no you know computer generated stuff it's all basically done by hand and so sometimes it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours just for a two second shot yeah um, yeah so that that was definitely very very interesting we had some you know lord of the ring fans so once okay. we got to hobbiton we kind of lost them yeah, they were like, right, them. Yep, yep. yeah just do you and then yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get you back when you're when you're done um so that was definitely very interesting um from from Rotorua, we then flew over to Wellington, uh, which was very interesting as well. You know, uh, just just for clarification, Wellington's yes. on the north. That is correct. Of the South Island. Yes. 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 Yep. Yeah. So that was definitely interesting, and so we went. Uh, we flew. Um, we then did uh, in Wellington. We did like a walking tour of Wellington. Uh, very, very interesting, you know, seeing people, you know, um, having, a, you know, swimming in the water that, and, you, you know, outside it's like six, seven Celsius, so probably not more than 50 Fahrenheit, and they were swimming, and I was like, okay, right. All right. You know, to each their own. Exactly right, but the, and the funny thing is, it was not. We're not talking two, three people. We're talking like Lots a of lot people of people. Doing, you doing know? It, yeah. So that was definitely interesting. Um, Wellington does not have the feel of the capital that you know when you go to Ottawa or when you go to Washington D.C. It kind of has that feel. Okay, this is the capital city. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. get that. Uh, Wellington does not have that, which I found very interesting. Um, okay. Very walkable city. Very interesting. A very big like beer and sort of like coffee culture that I found like well beer for sure in Australia yeah Brazil. you know yeah. listen uh, it's it's just it was it was great um, so definitely you know we we had that um, we also visited the uh, New Zealand Museum and and obviously for for people who are passionate about history you you have a whole exhibition about um, you know uh, the Battle of Gallipoli um, and and Anzac and and it's 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 very very powerful. It yeah, really describes everything that those young men went through. Just for our listening audience, Anzac is the Australian New Zealand Army Corps, yes. which came about or came into being when both countries went to war as countries for the first time during World War One in 1915. Yes. As um, as you just mentioned, Ash, in a place called Gallipoli, Gallipoli, which is yes. in Turkey. And that's where the Anzac legend was born. So there's a bit of a segue to that. Australia and New Zealand are two separate countries, similar cultures at times, other times completely different. We have this very friendly love-hate relationship. But from a military point of view, um, we have served shoulder to shoulder, so I think through almost every uh, major yes. conflict since World War I. So the Anzac aspect and spirit is very important to both the Australians yes. and to the Kiwis. Yeah, and, and you can tell because honestly the museum uh, in general, uh, which, you know, has a lot of has a lot of information and a great exhibition about, you know, just Maori culture in general, but then also um, a separate exhibition about about the Battle of Gallipoli was very, very moving. And yeah. I think a lot of a lot of people felt 
that you know they learned so much that day in those few hours that we were yep. there interesting thing so the museum is free for everybody that's the that's the nice part about it mm -hmm. i always love a free museum honestly <laughs> because it's hey keep in mind i got kids mm -hmm. right so it, there's 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 always a good option when you got uh, when you got um, when you get a free museum um if you want to visit the exhibition, the Gallipoli exhibition, it is also free. If you want a guided tour, you have to pay for sure. that. But then again, we can arrange that, and it's not a, yeah, it's not course. the end of the world cost-wise. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just uh, you, um, you're scrolling through my photos right exactly. now. I know, I know, I know. Again, for well, the, for those who are listening and not seeing the video portion, I'm just scrolling through the uh, Facebook post that Yeah. Did. One thing that struck out, which I'm always jealous of, is it looks like you did a helicopter ride as well. That's 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 the last night, actually, we were okay. there. That's in Queenstown. But before that, yeah, the yeah. one cool thing that we also did in Kaikoura, which I loved, by the way, uh, we went on a uh, whale watching trip. Okay. And instead of whale watching out of a boat, we actually watched whales out of planes, which was really, really, really interesting. Yes, yeah. that was really, really cool. Never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I might have, I might have, there's a photo of me, you know, riding shotgun. Our, our pilot was actually this. This is in a plane, not the helicopter. Which is, exactly, yes, okay. it's in a plane, yeah. So we had this, uh, this young pilot, she must have been about 30, you know, so. 13 uh, or 30? Well, I was actually, no, 30, <laughs> 30, but she like, yeah, yeah. honestly, like she was, she was very young. Like I always thinking like pilots should be in their, you know, 50s because that right. kind of like screams experience, right? I made the mistake of asking her, you know, how long she's her, been doing that. And of course I got the, I didn't ask her her age. I'm, I, I know better than that. But uh, I did ask her how, um, uh, how long she had been a pilot. And obviously, I got the answer. It's my first day. I was kind of expecting that answer, to be honest with you. Uh, so you know, it was it was really interesting. It just gives you a very different perspective on how big the whales are, and you know, you get a real sense of 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 I don't know, like wow, basically, yeah, you get sure. that wow moment because you don't necessarily realize. You know, we were asked like, "Have you seen whales before?" I mean, not really, unless you <laughs> consider like, what is it? Uh, you know, what's the park next to Niagara? I think they call it Marine Land, I oh, think. Oh, Marine yeah, Land. Right? Yeah, or if you, you go you to don't Universal see well and you don't want to no, see whales. Don't there. do that. Yeah. So I think that, you know, was, was definitely great. Seal colonies everywhere, basically, you're driving. Uh, when we crossed from the north to the South Island, we took the ferry, which was, again, a great, great crossing. Uh, it took about three hours to cross on the ferry from, uh, from the north to the South Island. And that, I thought, was, was a very nice sort of way of... of being welcomed into the South Island because sure. you're welcomed into the, you know you get into like the Marlboro Sound area, which is great. That entire part of the South Island is known for the wines. It is the wine yeah, region the wine of, region of, of New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of that. We went on a catamaran to see uh, an. Um, a mussel farm. We actually had fresh mussels. I, I just saw a photo of that. Yes, and yes, yeah, there it is. Yes, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, drank way too much wine and ate way too much mussels. Way too many mussels, basically. For those mm. looking. <laughs> yeah. No, trust me. The video. There's it's nothing the like that. There's nothing like fresh mussels. You know, we also we also had like salmon. Um, so it was a great day. And again, the weather really cooperated. So we did that in the morning. Then we went to a couple of wineries. Uh, where we had some we had some great wines. Finished off the evening with with a lovely dinner cooked by a local chef, um, and uh, and again some some more wine pairing. Like I was I was I'm not a I'm not a wine connoisseur. Uh, I had some lovely wines. <laughs> you know I I was asked a few times like what is what is it that you taste you know on your palate and I'm like just I'm just enjoying the wine. You Don't just even take, ask. I'm the same. Exactly. Like, I'm just enjoying the wine. Basically like through my time involved with Latin America. I've been lucky enough to go to Chile and Argentina. Yes. Of course, here in uh, Toronto, where we're based, uh, down to Niagara. Okay. Sorry, one second. No, you're good. I just got to warm these. Okay, wh where are you guys meeting? Okay, cool. Because I'm just doing an interview thing here. Cheers, man. Okay, I'll just pick it up from there. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, in my times with Latin America, I've been lucky enough to go to Chile and Argentina. Of course, we're based here in Toronto, so we have Niagara down the road. I was just in Australia, and a friend of mine actually runs a winery, and he's right into wines for obvious reasons. <laughs> Same thing. He said, what do you like? I said, I like wine. Like, <laughs> I don't really know. Well, I, I can't pick 
the woods and the fruits. In yes, it. like I like. I know. Yeah, there's a wine that tastes nice and wines I don't like. That's a, exactly. I have a very simple palate. Yeah. Let's put it that way. I will tell you this though: they do make it very seamless. Yeah, you know, and they do make it. You know, they do explain to you about winemaking and and the wine in general in very layman's terms. So I think that it's not intimidating. I always thought that wine tasting was going to be intimidating, and it was not. You know, so that was great. Obviously, they're known for their Sauvignon Blanc because I've had enough of it now that I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, there's there's some other there's some other wines that I've tasted that were really nice. Um, a, a few really nice Rieslings and a Pinot Noir, for instance, really really known. But I think like that area, like Marlboro Sound, yeah, Mar yeah. basically area. Uh, I think we spent the night in Blenheim. Uh, were really really nice, and so I really enjoyed that. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at your yes. Facebook post now and seeing these whale photos, which I now realize. Ah, oh, there's a photo. Yeah. So yes. anyone at home, there's there's yeah. photo. That's me. That's me. I was gonna wear my I was gonna wear my Top Gun shirt, but I completely forgot that day. So what type of whales were these? Uh, Southern right. They look like Southern right. No, no these sperm. were sperm whales. Sperm whales. Yes, sperm, sperm whales. whales. Yes, and from yeah. what I've been told, basically the the female sperm whales will remain in the warm waters uh, of like the Cook Islands and. That that area basically so then mm -hmm. you the males only come down to like New Zealand so that's why it's very hard to spot them because they are solitary they don't they don't swim in in like groups in, in pods yeah in pods and so you know they they surface for about 10 to 15 minutes and then they and then, back down, then they back okay. down in the water for about 45 so it's it's really hard to see them wow. yeah, yeah i know it's crazy so you have to kind of like be at the right time in the right place but we had two planes up and then so obviously they communicate with each other and that means that one in of each the plane i'm looking at the photos for six those people who aren't, yeah six people in per plane okay. yeah so i mean there was five of us plus the pilot plus the pilot yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. basically. Okay, cool. And again, I, I called shotgun because I was yeah, like, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, so North South Island. Then you're yes. obviously down, spent some time down in Queenstown, which is the adventure center yes. of uh, New Zealand. There's Queenstown itself, and then there is, it's totally slipped my mind now, uh, Milford Track. Yes. Um, and what's the whole glacial region down there? What's it called? Milford Sound. Milford Sound. Milford yes. Track, yeah. Milford Sound. Yeah. So, I mean, we went, to, we went to Christchurch first, and we had a lovely day in Christchurch as well, and then went down to, went down to, um, uh, you know, went down to, to Queenstown, where we spent a couple of nights, mm -hmm. went all the way down to Milford Sound on the, on the bus, or the coach, whatever you want to call yeah. it, in the, in the morning. Um, while that may be long for people, because it's about a five-hour a ride. Um, the thing is, you do stop along the way yeah, quite course, in a few yeah. places, and it's nice because you do see, uh, you know, Mirror Lakes, for instance, was actually really cool because that day was absolutely flat, so you can see why they called them the Mirror Lakes. Right. Uh, and then, you know, Queenstown, you get to. Yeah, you're still there. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> sure it's still on. Yeah. There you go. Um, and then from uh, from Queenstown, we went down to um, we went down to. Um, uh, so from from Queenstown went to Milford Sound, uh, absolutely fantastic, uh, you know, going on 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 the ship from Milford Sound all the way down to the Tasman Sea. It's about an hour basically yeah. sailing, and you come uh, you come back. We were met by dolphins. Yeah, I mean, the waterfalls were were spectacular, and even just just a general sort of drive down from from Queenstown to Milford Sound. I, I really, really enjoyed it. The, right. the bus actually has these dome sort of... Dome ceilings? Uh, yeah, ceilings. So you can really appreciate the yeah. the mountains and the scenery, the landscape, everything. Yeah. yeah it's some so jet boating as well, which was cool. Yeah, again, so in this area, there's like, uh, there's jet boating, the home of um, bungee jumping. It was actually yes. invented down in Queenstown. Yes. Uh, the drive down to Milford Sound, as you mentioned, the whole Milford Sound has a very similar look to uh, to the Norwegian fjords, that type of well, vibe Well, it is to a it. fjord, apparently. Well, it, so well, it is a fjord, that's interesting. but it's got that look to it. Yeah, And you can does. cruise through Milford Sound as well. That is correct. Did you do a cruise? Yes, so we you cruised okay. on the Mil yeah, from Milford Sound, basically, we cruised all the way down to the Tasman Sea. The sea was a bit rough. Interestingly enough, it, that's when you realize that if you just go further south, you're basically going to hit Antarctica at some that's point. That's right. Uh, so, uh, really, really interesting uh, as, as an area. Obviously, it got cooler as we progressed further south. Um, which was which was kind of interesting because in my mind it says when you're going south it should be warmer, but yeah, obviously yeah, you're in yeah. the southern hemisphere, so it's the other way and around. You can't get much further south. Yeah, you <laughs> can't got you cannot get any further well, you know any more uh, further south than that. But it was great because on the way back we actually 
took a couple of helicopters to yeah and that took yes, all of 40 fair, minutes yeah. that took all of 40 minutes so it's a it's an amazing option for clients and it it definitely is that wow moment yeah, and yeah. it's the perfect way of of finishing the trip you know i honestly had people when we landed on top of the mountain and we had a glass of champagne uh, as you do as you do exactly <laughs> yeah um I actually had a couple of the agents crying because they were just overwhelmed by yeah. the by the moment. It was absolutely fantastic. So I think that was just a spectacular way of ending the trip. So whether that's a fam trip or whether that's just a travel advisor putting together an itinerary for their clients, definitely the helicopters are the wow factor that you need to end the trip. The it trip, is yeah. weather dependent, obviously. That's the thing. Yeah, so course. we kind of kept our fingers crossed that we were going to be able to do it and we were able to do it, which was fantastic. Uh, there is the option of a fixed wing plane as well, not just helicopters. So that's, that's the second option. Obviously, the helicopters give you that um, freedom to you know, land, land on top yeah. of a mountain as yeah. opposed to the planes, right? So that was definitely something great. Uh, you do have some sort of a message. Okay, good. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I kept waiting for. Okay, so we'll go again. Yep, yep, we're good. So, okay, keep going. Um, uh, sorry, I'm still getting actually because we all had like a WhatsApp group, so I'm still getting you, text you messages still from, chatting the, to them? from okay. the. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so overall, um, obviously New Zealand, you know. All, all you have to do is watch things like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit to see the yes. beauty. And a, a majority of that was shot in the South Island, yes. sort of like the, the more grand yes. scenes. So New Zealand, was it fair to say, from your point of view, from what you saw, is, is very diverse in its um, wildlife, its nature. Like you go from North Island to South, you yes. go from like the Hot Springs, Rotorua, yes. the North, the Black Sand Beaches, to White Sand Beaches, to wine country. So that's all climate based. Yes. Then you get south, and then in summertime you have Queensland, Milford Sound, which is excellent outdoor activities. Um, and then in the wintertime, for those who don't know, Queenstown is a very, very big ski resort. They as were well. just opening the ski slopes, actually. They were just opening, yeah. Yes. I actually learned to, learned to ski um, in, in Queenstown. So it's a really good year round destination, New Zealand. Obviously, really South Island, South, Southern South Island will be snowy in their yes. winter which is north america's summer, summer. Yes. so it's flipped flipped seasons so yeah did you feel that that the you know basically as you went north to south the scenery changed as you went it definitely changes but i think that's the beauty of new zealand mm -hmm. because you get you know a big city like auckland with you know almost two million people so you get that urban big feel. being relative for new well, zealand two million people well out of the five that live in new zealand you know it's it's a big city right yeah exactly so it's 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 still it has that big city feel obviously and then you go to places like Aikura that has like you know 2,000 people all together yeah. you know so it's, it's definitely a big a big difference uh, I think New Zealand has something for everybody I think that's the that's the right way of putting it and it's such a diverse destination I honestly came back home and I told my wife we got to go back yeah we have to go back because I think you would enjoy it I think the kids would definitely enjoy it there's something for everybody you know when we did the fam trips and when we do all the fam trips we obviously try to you know, I don't want to say cram as much as possible, but you're obviously no. trying to present as much as possible uh, of, of, the, of what the destination has to offer. Um, so yes, our itinerary was busy, but to be honest with you, we had some amazing experiences. We did some great things. We saw some great things. And, and I think just we had some great meals and some great wines. What was the total length of the trip? Uh, so with flights? we went with flights. So I flew on the 5th and I came back on the 16th. 11 days plus yes. your date changes so yeah yeah 10 days to the southern hemisphere breed australia new zealand that quick yeah. but that's what a fam is like we understand yeah. that so we're yeah. talking a business trip versus a yeah. personal trip yeah so the normal recommendation for anything to the southern hemisphere be it the pacific islands which you could also include two yes. from new zealand and or australia um we normally say two weeks two full weeks in either country yeah is good yeah, three weeks is great. Four weeks is perfect, yeah. and that applies for New Zealand as well. Because yeah. even though New Zealand's smaller, there's a lot more crammed into New Zealand. Yes, and Australia is bigger, but there's a lot of empty space in Australia, yes. which is beautiful. But you don't really want to see it. <laughs> I'll admit that. So yeah. So for those listening and watching, our recommendation is for your clients two weeks minimum to yeah. New Zealand. 
Again, yeah. three great, four ideal. Exactly. And yeah. I would say, you know what, Don, it's about qualifying the clients as of well. Course, you know, always. I think yeah. that, you know, if I'm looking at, you know, taking again, just going back to my, my, my personal example, if I'm going to take the kids, I have to figure out what are some of the things that they would like to do, course, right? Yeah. Versus, you know, some of the things that, you know, my wife and I would like to do if it was just the two of us going. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, two weeks, definitely. And you can have a slower pace if you're going to do, you know, two weeks. Obviously, again, we kind of like crammed a lot of stuff into the fam trip. But again, that is for a reason that, at yeah. the end of the day. Uh, but again, bottom line is there's some amazing experiences. There's some fantastic places and, and there is something for everybody in New Zealand. And I honestly, you know, I walked into this fam trip not necessarily knowing what to expect. Which and is a nice way to do things. You know, which is a yeah. nice way to do yeah. things because uh, you're then, I was, I was honestly, I was blown away. Yeah. Uh, to say that I was pleasantly surprised would be the understatement of the year. I was blown right. away. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And again, it didn't feel like, you know, oh my God, I got a 14 hour, you know, trip ahead of me or I got a 14 hour trip back. Uh, because even when I got back, I was anxious, well, to see my family, but at the same time to kind of share with them the things all that the I good, did, all the cool you know, things, and all, yeah. of the, all of the cool things that, that I did, yes. And it's worth pointing out again to our uh, travel partners out there that a very popular option for New Zealand when clients have more time is self-driving, be it in a motorhome, yes. RV, um, or even a, a vehicle. Uh, New Zealand's roads is very well set up. You can put your car on a ferry between North and South yes. Island as well. So that self-driving is big, particularly in the motorhomes. Yes. Um, and then it's quite easy just to do some or all the activities yes. that uh, you've just mentioned. Correct. Um, and and outside of Auckland, honestly, there's really no traffic whatsoever. Yeah. Well, again, so it's a nice part. country yes. with five million people. Yeah. I think Toronto's population is four. It's, yeah. I mean, if you're taking the suburbs, it's probably ten. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know? so, so, yeah. Um, yeah, there was an interesting set. I, um, when I did the webinar on Central Island, there was some, there's a, a large lake just south of Auckland and, the, uh, and Lou, who's the representative of the area said that all of Singapore population yes, could fit, could in, fit the in the lake, lake. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right, and yeah. so yeah, there's a lot of space in New Zealand, even though it's a small country. Yeah. I think it's about as big as Japan, roughly. Yes. So yeah, so the so the self driving, and as you say, once you get out of the big cities, yes, it's very open. And the Kiwis are very very friendly. They are. They really and are very welcoming, very friendly, very sort of open, and and very grateful that you know we brought eight travel advisors yeah uh to to experience the destination and obviously come back and then be able to sell the destination a lot better mm -hmm. um so yeah that was that was one of the things that i was you know everybody was was really grateful for wonderful well sounds like it was an awesome trip it i am was. jealous was jealous when i was seeing your facebook post anything <laughs> you want to sort of finish up with wrap up with no you know what i'm i'm just i'm just thinking like you know there's there's a number of destinations that i've had on my you know, list of things to to go back to, you know, mm -hmm. places to go back to. And I'm, you know, there's, uh, there, there's, you know, the list is obviously ever changing, but New and Zealand ever growing. is, you know, <laughs> never growing, yes. But definitely New Zealand is, is, is there in the top three, I want to say right now, after having experienced it, like having experienced it and, and, and coming back, uh, you know, I would definitely, you know, recommend it to everybody that that is is looking to travel and has has not been doesn't necessarily know what New Zealand is all about. Just go. It's it, it's going to be mind blowing. It's going to be yeah. amazing. Hundred percent. Okay. So thank you for your time, Rish. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much, Don. Everyone out there listening in, thank you for your time or watching us. Thank you for your time. Um, if you need to contact Rash, uh, what's your email for our Canadian travel partners? Oh, sure. It's my name. So R A R E S. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. R A R E S at goway.com. Very okay. simple. Yeah. So you can contact Rash or you yeah. can count, uh, contact any of your account managers out there. Should you have any questions on uh, New Zealand or anywhere that Goway goes to, um, Goway started for the most part. There are some <laughs> caveats to the story of, of Goway's <laughs> origin, but really we started or gained our fame and reputation in Australia and New Zealand. So our team of uh, specialists are second to none when it comes to, well, everywhere, but particularly uh, Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands. Remembering that if you are on your way to New Zealand, to or from uh, options with Air New Zealand plus Air Tahiti Nui. Yeah. And- uh, Air Canada actually is flying to Auckland as well. Okay, Air Canada yeah. to Auckland. But if you look at Air Tahiti Nui and a couple of others, you can fly via the Pacific Islands, Tahiti, Yes, Fiji, the Cooks yes. as well are also close by. 
Uh, lots of options for New Zealand and it surrounds obviously uh, Aussie, New Zealand combination would be the ultimate. Uh, they are very different countries. So, uh, but today's subject is New Zealand. Obviously, Ash was blown away by it. Um, I don't think I've heard anyone come back from New Zealand, even an Australian, not being, <laughs> a, not being impressed with the country and its people. There you go. So again, thank you, Radish, for your time. So much, Everyone Don. out there, thank you for listening in. Thank you, everybody. In, and we'll uh, talk to you next time. All right, perfect. Thank you.